Hey guys, welcome to the Truth Corner. I'm Lachey Hawkins, and this session is on purpose. Now, what does that mean? I want to tell you guys a little um, testimony of what I went through in my second marriage. But when I say second marriage, it's not to a different man. I married my husband in 2010, we divorced in 2015, and we remarried in 2016. So when I remarried him in 2016, um, we discussed, you know, getting back together, being back together, trying to give our family a chance for our son. He um, asked for, for my forgiveness when it came to the cheating and things like that. And he was at a really dark place in his life where it pushed him back to be with his family. Um, of course, I was not for it in the beginning. I actually cried about it all the time. I'm like, no, 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 no. But God kept nudging my heart like, no, do it, do it, do it. I feel like a lot of times the Lord gives us a lot of opportunities to get things right and to get a do-over. So I felt like that was God's way of giving my husband a do-over. But also his way of showing me his actual love and mercy towards me and then showing it on the flip side um, towards him. So it's like we were both learning a lesson in the forgiveness of in our second marriage. Now, the most devastating thing to me was, I think I was more devastated the very first time we divorced, but the second time I was so angry. I was very angry because I felt like for a year, though we were divorced for only a year on paper, we were separated for almost two years. We didn't live together or anything. And in that time, I went through a whole deprogramming. I was going through counseling. I was really trying to get myself to an emotional, better place for me and my son. And after that, once he came back around, I felt like, and then once he came back around, and then once we got remarried, and then we got divorced again, I felt betrayed because I felt like you took me out of the place where I grew from, from you the first time and then it happened all over again. So I was just devastated. I was humiliated too, because I'm like, I gave you another chance to remarry you, and then you do what you do again, you cheat, and then you have a child on me, he had a child. So that's why um, I divorced him, because I felt like I wasn't gonna be able to do that work. So for him to do what he did before, and for me to give him another chance, I was so devastated. And then I felt like it blew up in my face. And it was other, I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. But I knew what God told me. And so a lot of times we think that when things don't work out, it just wasn't God's will, it wasn't God's purpose. And that kind of played in my mind all the time, especially growing up in the church. You know, you get the, well, if it didn't work out, you know, it wasn't God's will in the first place. And that's not true. I feel like a lot of times, if you didn't have a tragedy in your life, the Lord wouldn't have birthed your ministry. And if I would have never went through what I went through, marrying, divorcing, remarrying, and divorcing again, it wouldn't have birthed this. We wouldn't be having this Truth Corner. We wouldn't be having the Mom Talk Network. I wouldn't be having the Powder Room Show. I wouldn't be having other moms reaching out to me for their shows to be on my network. So I feel like, you know, it pushed me into my purpose when before I had no motivation or I felt like I had no purpose. And I was looking for that. And I, the Lord had to show me like, you know, I know what I told you to do. And I need you to be um, confident and stand firm of what I told you to do. In spite of it not working out, it pushed me to something. And it also pushed my ex-husband to something. Um, and though people, and this is a thing too, and this is a, a, a mature statement that I'm going to make. Though he was wrong, what he did in the past is pushing him into the things he's supposed to be doing well in Christ. You know, because he can have a testimony as well. If he does things right from now on, he can have a testimony to reach out and to teach other young men of what not to do and how he messed up. But he has to be able and be willing to take that call from God to do that. Until then, he's going to, you know, God's going to deal with him accordingly. But as far as me, it took me a long time to realize, like, no, I know what God told me. I know my confirmations that I had. I was solid. I know that I'm a praying woman. I know that God speaks to my heart. I know what he told me to do. And it was until I listened to a sermon from T.D. Jakes. I love T.D. Jakes. Shout out to T.D. Jakes. Um, 
that he talked about your purpose and your calling being birthed out of tragedy. And he was just explaining and breaking those Bible verses and those scriptures and even those stories down of like David and, you know, uh, uh, you know, people in, in, in the Bible of how all the things they've been through, it birthed something out of them that, you know, that Christ allowed it to happen. So instead of you thinking that the bad thing in your life is just so tragic, it's on purpose. God has a plan. He has a reason. It's a it's it's a it's some it's a bigger picture than what you're thinking of right now. And yes, you might be in the middle of it, and yes, you might be just like you feel like all hope is gone and you don't know what to do, but everything happens for a reason. It's on purpose. All things work together for the good of God to the call and to those who are it's like it's on purpose it's on purpose so what you're going through what you're dealing with if it's something negative take a step back and think about like lord why am i going through this write some things down pray about it read your word and then you never know what kind of ministry what kind of calling you never know how that will maneuver you in life to introduce you to new people who's going to give you opportunities to bring people to christ or uh, opportunities for you to even just flourish I truly believe that what I went through was on purpose it was for Lachey to step out of her comfort zone and at the time too though my family was around I still felt alone because they weren't going through it and they didn't understand I had one person who understood which was my aunt Valencia because she went through it but she was the only one who I can really connect with when it came to that and she, with a lot of prayer and a lot of encouragement, she helped me through. But then also the Lord had to just tell me like, girl, this is on purpose. I did this for a reason. And though we have a free will and things like that, the Lord didn't chuck my husband to do what he did. You know, we have a free will to do right. And it's choose you to say who you're going to serve. So it's like, if he's going to do what he's going to do, I wanted to make sure that I did what God told me to do. And I, what I did, God told me to do. And because of what happened, I just couldn't deal with it anymore. I did not want to put in the work with another woman's child in my home. And I also felt like I wouldn't allow my husband to love his daughter like he should have. Because it was just something in me that couldn't accept her as my own because of how she was birthed. You know, it wasn't like he had her before we got married. He had her, got pregnant with this woman in the midst of our marriage. So that was the reason why I was like, you know what, no. Let's just be honest with ourselves. I'm not willing to do that work. And then two, I don't know if I will accept that child in my home. And you can't do that. He, She has to have a relationship with her dad. You know, it's not her fault. So I have to think about that. But I have to realize too, everything that happens on purpose as of today we co-parent very healthy we get along we're i want to say we're best friends but we have a healthy relationship and i thank the lord for that because if i if i didn't even have a healthy relationship i wouldn't even have the mindset and the mental capacity even just share with you guys i want to make sure whatever ministry and whatever i was going to do was going to have no um, negative residue of what I was still dealing with. So I thank the Lord for what I went through. I wouldn't want to go through it again because, of course, in the midst of it, it's like, oh my gosh, you feel like all hell's breaking loose. But I know that I'm helping others. And not only did it birth my shows, but I'm giving, I'm getting women out the blue who are reaching out to me on Instagram, on YouTube, and Facebook, inboxing me. Oh my gosh, I went through that. Oh my gosh, really. oh my gosh, can you pray with me? Can you pray for me? Can we talk? Can we hang out? And I've got a lot of friends and mentees that I'm mentoring through this whole process. So what I went through, it wasn't, it was hell at the time, but that hell produced my purpose. So I just want to tell you women out there and even men who go through it with some trifling women, because there's some trifling ones out there as well. It's not all the men. Um, what you're dealing with is on purpose and don't think, don't, don't, don't give it so much energy where you fall apart. Don't fall apart. Stay strong. You're going to get through it. The light is definitely at the end of the tunnel. It's on purpose and you'll be surprised of what that purpose is birth, what is birthing. Um, I just want to encourage you guys and just know that what you're dealing with is on purpose and it's not by accident. 
remember to think it, to do it, and to be it. Love you guys. purpose don't